For the record, I did not leave England back in January with this much luggage, <laughs> with a humongous suitcase and a little suitcase. But I've just acquired quite a few things in Australia and also my sister wants me to take this suitcase back home to England because she borrowed it from my parents years ago and now she wants to give it back and so if you're wondering my Eagle Creek 40 litre backpack which I took with me on this trip is inside of here along with all of the extra clothes that I bought on this trip. Hello everybody, I hope that you are well. My name is Christiane and welcome to my channel Backpacking Bananas. I am currently in Perth Airport, Perth, Australia. And today, this evening, I am going to be flying home all the way back to the UK. This will be my first time going home since New Year. So I've been away for four months, just over four months. I spent two and a half months in Thailand and then I've spent around six weeks in Australia, um, in Sydney and in Perth and now it's time for me to fly home. So I got to the airport nice and early because I feel like in these Covid times you never really know what's going to happen in an airport these days, how long things are going to take. Luckily I'm flying with Emirates and the check-in process was super super fast and smooth. This is the first time in two years I have not needed to show proof of anything for getting on a flight so I feel like things are really progressing I don't have to show proof of vaccination I don't have to show a negative COVID test I don't have to fill in a passenger locator form it's just it's so much nicer not like having to stress about having all of these extra things so that's really good I've already come through like security and everything I'm in the departure lounge and I've got myself some chicken tenders and chips, which I've absolutely smothered in ketchup. And I'm just catching up on like some video editing and I'm uploading some stuff. And I've connected to the Perth airport free Wi-Fi, um, which is great and it's actually really, really fast. But something that I always say when connecting to airport Wi-Fi's or any open Wi-Fi networks for that matter is that it's so important that you have a VPN, uh, which brings me nicely onto the sponsors of today's video, Surfshark. Surfshark are a VPN which stands for Virtual Private Network. And one of the benefits of a VPN is that it turns your open network connection private. Because when you are connected to a public Wi-Fi network, like in an airport, for example, did you know that you your device is at risk of being hacked. Someone around here, some hackers, can get into my device through that internet connection. However, when you switch Surfshark on, it acts as a virtual shield on your connection to the public Wi-Fi and no hackers can get in. So of course I've switched on my Surfshark now that I am at the airport. What a VPN can also do is it can switch your virtual location of your device to anywhere in the world. So what this means is that you can access media or services that may not be available in the country that you are in. So this is super handy for something like Netflix where I can switch my Surfshark to the USA which has the most Netflix shows in the world. And speaking of that, I definitely need to download some Netflix shows onto my iPad right now so I've got something to watch on the plane because it's a really long flight. <laughs> But Surfshark is one of the only VPNs which allows you access on an unlimited number of your devices on your phone, on your laptop, on your iPad with just the one account and Surfshark have given me an amazing discount for you guys where you can get 83% off and an extra 3 months for free when you use my cone backpacking which is an insane deal so I will leave the link for that in the description. I feel like it would be rude to be at the airport and not get myself a cheeky rosé. I was thinking of getting coffee, my last coffee in Australia where it's so good, but it's a night flight. It's currently eight o'clock. My flight's in two and a half hours, which means by the time I get on, it's gonna be like half 10. And to be honest, I think I'm just gonna wanna go to sleep. So getting a coffee right now doesn't seem like the smartest move. But I'm really glad that this cafe is open actually because I was having a look around the airport and a lot of the other restaurants and stuff were closed and I was worried for a moment that like they would all be closed. And I thought, oh no, because my plan was to get dinner at the airport, but it's fine. One place is open, it's fine. As long as I can get something for dinner, I'm a happy girl. But I am flying Emirates. I haven't flown Emirates in so long and they're a really nice airline so I really hope and I'm imagining that they're going to treat us well on the flight and we should get some nice food and snacks and things. it 
to Dubai, ladies and gentlemen. That flight was not fun. It, it could have been worse. There could have been babies crying, but it was just being in the middle of the middle seat is just the absolute worst place that you can be. And I don't know why I was under the impression that like Emirates seats, especially on a long haul flight would be wider, but they were really, really skinny. And so I felt like I was this the whole time. My Apple Watch seems to think that I managed to get two and a half hours of sleep, which I'm actually quite impressed with, to be honest. It didn't feel like I got that much. Um, and I, I couldn't work either because like my arms were just like this. There was no way I was gonna be able to get my laptop out and do some work. But hey ho, such is life. I'm grateful that I made it safely to Dubai. So the first thing I did was head to the bathroom and just freshen up. I washed my face, put on some moisturizer, put on my contact lenses. I changed my outfit and my underwear. Oh, and cleaned my teeth, of course. So just generally feeling a little bit fresher. The connection time here is actually really, really nice. It's only like two hours, so I have like an hour and a half to wait. I've just been to Costa and I've got myself a nice strong coffee and a pan au chocolat. And the cost was obviously in Dubai currency, which I literally got no idea what the exchange rate is. So it was like 43 du Dubai. What is the currency here? I have no idea how much that cost. Hopefully it wasn't absolutely outrageous. So XE, add currency. Dubai, oh maybe, wait, United, what, Emirates, is it that, Emirati, should we, should we take a guess and say that it's going to be that, 43 of those, oh, £9.28 for my coffee and croissant, that is expensive ma'am. But yeah, I'm feeling good to be here, but the journey is not over. I've got another eight hours after this. So just gonna try and relax and spread out as much as I can in the next two hours, knowing that the following eight hours are probably gonna be cramped again. It's now time for me to make my way to my gate. And just a little side note, the staff in Dubai airport are so nice and friendly. Every person who I've come across, like working in the, um, working in the Costa, the person picking up rubbish, just so friendly and nice. So yeah, it's a nice little positive comment about Dubai airport. through passport control and now I've got to see if my bag has arrived. There was so many people going through passport control so I'm hoping that the bags have already come out. Oh, it's, it looks like that one but it's not that one. Hmm, they've already got a bunch of people's bags out. It looks like this but it's not that one. Uh, I think it might have been over there, might have gone round. Ah, there's so many bags. I've got no idea if mine's come out yet or not. Mm, nope, not that one. I have a specific lock on mine. It's like the same bag as that, but not that lock. It's a sad day when you arrive at the airport, like after a long flight and no one can pick you up. But alas, it is a Thursday in the middle of the day, so I'm not surprised. So I've got to get the Heathrow Express or the Rail Air back to Woking. So I'm at the Heathrow bus station. I couldn't figure out how to get a ticket in the station. So I think I can get it on the bus. Hope. So I think there is pros and cons to getting those massive, massive flights home. Like, you know, the double-decker planes, that's what I call home. Is it the A380? I don't know the names of planes, but anyway, those massive double-decker planes where you've got the peasant first-class people on the top and then you've got the baller economy people on the bottom. Um, so I'd say the cons are just that there's so many people on there. So if you are on economy, 
you're going to be the last person out and you have to wait for so many people to get off and then obviously when you go through passport control it just takes a lot longer than usual and then with the baggage reclaim there's just so many bags coming out and so it is quite hard to locate your bag however the pros and it is a big pro of being on one of those massive planes is that you do get more space I found that on that second plane compared to the first one the seats were just wider and there was just more leg room and there was just more bathrooms everything was just a little bit more roomy and comfortable so I was incredibly bored on the way home really really bored like I just got bored of the movies and I couldn't work because they do have plugs near the seats but not on every seat and they didn't have one on my seat so I couldn't plug in my laptop and so I couldn't get work done which was a little bit annoying because I was hoping to be productive on that flight but alas I'm glad that it's over now and now it's just a waiting game for this bus. Oh, I made it home everybody back to my bed welcome to my bed if you're new to the channel you may not have seen my bedroom at home it looks like this um yeah this is my parents house i am in the process of trying to find and buy my own house but that's something that i need to dedicate time to when i'm gonna be in london for a long amount of time this is this is my home, I'm back home after four months away and it feels good, it always feels good to come back home after being away for a long time. I have a lot of pleasure in traveling and exploring new places but I also get a lot of pleasure from coming home and going back to home comforts, having food in the fridge, a washing machine readily available, just my own nice big bed um, and just all of my stuff and not having to live out of a suitcase it's nice I'd say all in all that journey was a success it was pretty smooth for the most part just boring if I were to give it one describing word it would be boring and full very very full and busy but I'd say that that second flight was definitely better than the first one just in, in terms of space I didn't realize the difference between those planes which have the two levels and the plane which just has the one level even though it's the same like layout you just have more space on those double decker planes is that what it's called a double decker plane i don't even know i feel a little bit delirious to be honest i'm very sweaty because i got the bus home from heathrow to woking station and then i walked home from there and with a 24 kilo suitcase and a 35 liter suitcase and my backpack yeah, I'm very, very sweaty right now. And I'm actually feeling really good in terms of jet lag. It's three o'clock. My body clock is in Perth, which is seven hours ahead. So that means my body clock is on 10 p.m., but it's currently 3 p.m. But I still feel like I'm full of energy and full of life. And I think part of that is because it's really nice and light outside, obviously, because it's the middle of the day here. I do think that I will last until the end of the day. I don't feel like I'm about to crash anytime soon, but I think I will have another coffee shortly just to keep me going. And my aim, this is, this is my goal for beating jet lag this time, is to get an early night tonight and then to wake up at like 6 or 7 a.m and then hopefully just continue that routine because normally I'm someone who struggles to wake up early in the morning but I like doing it and so if jet lag can help me wake up earlier naturally then that's all for the better but I think I'm gonna end this video now I'm not too sure how long it's been um, but I really hope you enjoyed it and enjoyed coming with me on my journey home from Australia to London I'm not too sure what video is gonna be next I have decided that I am gonna be making an unpacking video so you're gonna see what's being unpacked there I'm also gonna make a video about like just settling into home life and what it's like coming back after a long trip and how I manage travel blues and everything like that so you can expect a video like that um, and honestly I'm not too sure what else is coming next but make sure you're subscribed to see whatever it is and I will see you in the next one bye bye